10 versus 3 one touch exercise where each team is actually going to score. So this yellow team here would score on one or the two goals here where the gray team would score on the two goals, one and two, that are facing their side. Um, you could score after eight passes or after 15 passes, it's a goal. So let's look at the way this played out. We did a couple different variations on this today. Everything one touch. So you can see this yellow team, once they get to eight, they can score. Unless they want to keep it to 15 passes, then at 15 passes, they get a point. Notice to add some variability here. Notice the person serving in the ball, launching in the ball from his hands, making that first touch unpredictable. It's either gonna come off the chest, off the thigh, whatever it is. But again, take a look at that. It's different than starting the ball every time from feet and making it predictable. So it's a nice little bit of variability in there. Again, after eight, we can score. They had eight there, they should probably score right away, but instead took the extra touch. This is an, an excellent small area game where you're always going to have to keep in mind, it's self-organizing, but you have to keep in mind the positioning all, of all the players in this exercise. They have to position themselves so they're always creating angles and using the, the making the space as big as possible. An 8v5 positional rondo. If you notice, there's two center mids and you can look at that as almost like a back three. It is eight against three. When the eight lose the ball, they can press together to win it back. When the three win the ball, um, they're going to go unlimited touch to either goal to try to score. And the team of eight only has two touch in possession. So you can see we did something fancy for you today. We had split screen for a little bit. So you can lo look to see how that looks from an overhead version over there on the left and right on the field type of view on the right. Again, those two center mids are looking for those small pockets of spaces. You can vary the conditions here. You can give the two center mids in the middle maybe one touch, the players on the outside two touch. You could reverse that as well. I always give that blue defending team unlimited touch once they win the ball. You can see we had two of these exercises running at once today. The other one, we actually adjusted the numbers a little bit. We had to have four in the middle, and then we had an extra, we had three uh, center mids in the other one. And we just do those things because we adjust them for the numbers that we have for the day if one group is a little bit bigger so we don't have to have players sit out. And that's a good thing to do, is always be able to adjust your numbers and make the training work however you have to make it work. Additional Rondo, it's five plus one. The plus one is in the red, so it's actually six versus three. This is again a positional game, so you have four out here, you have two in the middle who are positional, and we have to work eight passes. This is a two touch um, maximum. We have to work eight passes, and if the team works eight passes, they can score on this goal. If the ball is intercepted, it is played over here. These three yellow will come in here, and the red will transfer over, as this blue team will send three. Let's take a look at how this works. Gray obviously in possession of the ball with red. And that's eight passes, they can score on goal. So you'll see here, they take a chance to score, but it's blocked as they continue to work this ball. Again, all in all these exercises, body position, the position on the field, the position of your body before you receive the ball, scanning over your shoulder, all these things are so, so important. Always trying to keep this ball moving quickly. Almost scored right there. Very, very nice exercise this is. Gets the guys pressing, gets them moving. All the things that we want in our game model, even if you're a counterattack team, you can use these types of exercises. It doesn't mean you have to possess the ball forever, but to work out of tight spaces and get this ball so we can get it to the other side of the field, whatever we need to do, these are still really, really valuable soccer intelligence exercises where don't think you have to be Barcelona to run these exercises. These can run and fit almost any game model, to be fair. As we just watch a little bit more here. Hi, everybody. This is a 5v5 plus two in the middle. And then you have another team of five on the outside. 
whoever scores stays on so there's a quick transition here now this should be a bit of a positional game especially when you play one touch because it's very difficult um, in such a small area to keep this ball if you don't have your players with proper uh, proper spacing. As we play one touch, it's really, really important. Two touch, it gets a little bit, uh, a little bit easier when you play two touch. So I'll show you clips of us playing one touch and two touch. This was a, uh, an exercise that we did right after our initial warm up. It's a very low workload. If you notice, this is one touch here. You can see the nice spacing on the guys in red. When this changes to two touch, you'll see that, 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 that the shape changes just a little bit. I did not give the guys specific positions to be in, um, but they understand to keep this ball one touch, this really does have to have proper spacing if you're gonna keep this ball. It's always two touch on the steel, by the way. When this goes to two touch, you're going to see it looks just a little bit different. Now we're at two touch. And I allow those yellow players in the middle to score as well. Obviously the red players on the outside cannot score. Always have to be scanning, always have to understand what space you're in and who's close to you in that space because this is a very quick paced game. Obviously the workload is, is not as high in this game. This is more of, because of the pace, space is so small, this is really more of an IQ game. But it fit in with the day that we were, that we were at in training and the workload. B2 Rondo, you have two defenders in the middle, but here's the deal. We got these six, six players here are gonna play one touch. After six passes, the team in possession, this red team, can score on either goal. If one of the defenders wins the ball, they will just exchange places with one of the red players. You could play this self-organizing, you could play this positional with the players, depends on you how you want to do it. If the kids are having a hard time, give them two touch. You could put 10v2 in here, one touch. Whatever you want to do progression-wise, but let's take a look how this worked in training today. Four, five, six passes right there so they could score. Three, four, five, six passes, they could score there. Notice all one touch. Players are self-organizing in this. I did not give them specific positions to fill, but I could have done that. Uh, I usually vary that. If you watch my videos, you, you see that I vary it from positional to self-organizing. So this is a little different because most times you see the defenders win the ball and they have to score on the goals. This is after X amount of passes, the team in possession can score. Hope you enjoyed it. Today is a six versus three positional rondo that goes to goal. So we have four in the corners here. We have two that split this grid in half, so they're playing positionally. This is a nice positional setup. It's two touch. The red team needs to connect four passes minimum, then they can score on this goal. They can keep it for eight, ten passes, whatever they want, but they need to finish on this goal. The blue team sends three. If they win it, the ball gets switched into this side as red will send three, and it'll be six against three, and they'll get in a positional shape here on um, the blue team. Let's take a look at how it played out in training. One, two, three, four. Now they're good to go to goal. That's five, six. Tried to score there, didn't make it. One, two, three, four passes there. They can go anytime, and you see that's a nice job. That's a point. We usually play up to five. Um, first one to five is the winner and if it's too much with the three you could always send two instead of three if it's just a little if it's a little too difficult again we'll just watch this play out he'll try to finish right there just missed it so that was in that was in training today one is we're doing a 10 versus two partner one touch small area possession game here after eight passes you could play you could score either in this goal or this goal if you give away the ball you and your partner becomes the one chasing so let's take a look i believe blue's going to chase now everything's one touch after eight passes they could score they scored a little early there might have had it at five passes there and then later changed it i think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now they can score, and they score on that blue team. So you see how this works. 
Again, this is a self-organizing game. I don't give the guys positions. They can go anywhere they want, but it's such a tight area. This is around about a 10 by 10 space. They have to figure it out, correct body positioning before they receive the ball, make sure they get into a little bit of space, always scanning over their shoulder, and so forth. It's a really fun competitive game. Um, partner 10 versus 2. Condo, 
and you can see here what it looks like. The three come in, they defend. If they win the ball, they sprint off. The next group of three sprints on. In training today, what we did was little rotation. So after those six defend for three minutes, we swap them with six of the red, and then we go again. I had a physical station right after this. So we go from rondo to physical, small sided to physical. And this is how we began practice today. Let's take a look at how this looks in practice. You can see the 10 there. They're, these guys are playing one touch in blue right there. Come off, next set of three, come on. It looks easy, it's not an easy game when you're playing one touch. If you think that there's a little bit, there's not enough flow in the game, simply put it to two touch, it'll become much, much easier. But for these guys right here, they did a, a nice job with the one touch. The defenders you know, really need to work as a group. They can't just work as individuals or else it's gonna be very difficult for, for them to get the ball. You can see, you have to have awareness, especially if you wanna put your center mids in the middle there, good idea because they have to check their shoulders. They have to be aware of what's going on at all times. So that right there is are small sided to open training yesterday hope you enjoyed it i think your team will like it lots of progressions lots of things you could add to this but like i said try to touch if, if one touch is a little bit different In this exercise, this is a 4v2, and you could see the shape of this exercise here. So it gets wider and then much thinner. We have to create three passes or more, three passes or minimum, before we can transfer this ball to the other side. When the ball is transferred, the player in the middle will simply turn around. The side players will shuffle down into this new side here, and it'll become a 4v2 on this side. After three passes, we can transfer the ball to the other side. So we did this one in training today. Again, all about small areas, finding solutions to keep the ball in small areas, increasing the soccer IQ. So you can see here some nice little rhythm in that passing. I have a two touch restriction on this at the moment. You can play one touch with two touch on the transfer. And you can see this middle player, really that body position, if the middle player is going to switch the ball, really has to get that body position side on if the middle player is going to switch the ball. Again, you know that everybody who watches my channel, you know how big I am and players trying to find solutions in small areas. Because if you can't find solutions in small areas, the only other option is to get the ball out long. watch this play out for another second and that's the exercise so if you try that with your team I think they'll really enjoy it again finding solutions in small areas 4v2 and a little different type of a shape with transition now in this exercise you have 4v2 two yellows 
plus say the blue is on the ball now. It's 4v2 against the two reds. One yellow shifts if the ball shifts. Three passes and you can change to the other grid. When the ball changes to the other grid, that player gets two touch, that initial yellow player. One, two, three. positional rondo where you have six players so if we see here in blue where we have four kind of like in a in between each line and two in the middle which are positional against four yellow there's two yellow over here on this side and then the red are set up the same way one on top one on the bottom two out wide and two positionally playing in the middle what happens is after three passes Say the blue team could switch into the red team as two yellow will travel to make this always a 6v4. Now here's the catch. If the yellow win the ball, it is four versus two, one touch only for the team of four. So the team of four yellow, if they steal the ball, they get 4v2 against the two middle players in the square they're in. So let's take a look at how this plays out. So we just switched the ball. Gray lost the ball, so it's one touch here with the yellow four yellow versus the two gray in the middle. Now gray are defending. As the ball is switched, two more gray will come in. This is four versus two. As we switch that ball after three passes, if gray win it, it's one touch there. Now you can adjust the touches if you wanna give the team who wins the ball. Um, if those four win the ball, you could give them unlimited touch, uh, four v two. Again, the one touch is a little difficult, so feel free to, to adjust the rules so you get a nice flow to this game. But this is a nice positional game. You could see this as game model with the center back, two, two wing backs, uh, center mid, and maybe a striker up top. Um, and again, really, really uh, focus on the aspect of the two in possession in, in the middle. Uh, the two center mids make sure that they split the grid in half they play positional they're always looking to find those spaces behind and in between the defenders with the right body orientation so right there is three team six versus four positional rondo hope you enjoyed it
through hexagon color coded rondo. So this is a fast thinking game. So here we have, say this yellow player is gonna play to the red. This red player must call out the color of the person he is going to pass to before he plays this ball. And this is playing one touch. So the ball comes in, the red player has to identify if he's gonna play it to red. Before he touches the ball, he's gotta shout out red, play it in. As the ball's being played into the red player, say he's gonna play here to blue, he has to shout out blue before he one touches the ball in there to blue. So let's take a look at how this looked in practice. They're actually shouting out the names of the colors that they're playing to. One touch before it goes to that player. Very difficult, it looks a little bit easier than it is. It's very, very difficult to do. This is the first day that these guys did this. Um, challenging, right? Always thinking ahead, you have to be scanning. Not Obviously you wanna give good balls to feet. Not not so easy to do it at all. So this you could do this in any shape. If you want to do this with more players, one player on the inside, if you want to build it up so the kids are more successful in the beginning and then make it a little bit tougher, the idea is here, use any shape rondo that you want, any number of players on the outside, any number on the inside, figure it out for your environment. But it's a nice variation on rondo. Today is a nine versus three rondo where we have one touch, you can allow two touch for the player in the middle who really wants to find these spaces um, behind the, the, the three red defenders. So let's take a look at how this works. You see all this is one touch, moving that ball very, very quickly. If they can get it into the one player in the, in the middle, great, that one player really should come out behind those blue players, get the proper body orientation to see if it can get a touch on the ball and switch that ball really quickly. If there's pressure on the one player in the middle, always play the way he's facing. Try not to get that, um, to lose that ball under pressure. Again, look, there he is. He's sitting behind the blue players right there. That's really, really good. Making use of that space, understanding where he is, scanning proper body orientation. This is a nice low workload day. This is the day before a game for us. So nice one touch, nine versus three. After three minutes, we will, we will rotate out of this. So after three minutes, the three blue will exchange with three of the three of the grays. And notice there's no counter pressing. As soon as blue wins it, there's no counter pressing. We just start another ball with the gray team for the one touch. So all this is done with workload in mind, but always keeping the ball moving with that one touch. You could give, again, two touch for the player in the middle who can slide into those spaces and then use two touches, but one touch is, is really nice as well.